Good morning. I welcome you once again today to our virtual teaching. I urge you to subscribe to the channel. And then you can also I recommend it to your your friends and your colleagues in other schools to also subscribe to the Wasi History TV or channel. Yes, in our previous video lesson, we looked at the constitutional development in the Gold Coast, and specifically, we looked at the 1903 Constitution which we said was the first major constitution that was uh, promulgated in the Gold Coast. Again, we also came to realize that uh, before these constitutions were actually drafted, the Gold Coast, the Asante, and the uh, 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 Trans-Togolan were all uh, administered differently. And so the Gold Coast had a legislative and an executive council, uh, uh, executive council that administered or ruled, of course, the Gold Coast. But we also came to realize that the Asante and the Northern Territories and the Transvota Togoland also were ruled separately. They were ruled directly by the um, the governor or the colonial governor. <laughs> And so because of many agitations in the 1903 constitutions that were made by the educated elite, there was the need for the colonial governor to implement or introduce another new constitution. By way of reminding ourselves about the 1903 constitution, the composition in the executive, uh, in the executive council, we had four members which are comprised of the colonial secretary, the financial secretary, the head of the army, uh, and then of course also the attorney general. But we said that the head of the army was uh, later replaced with the, the director of public, uh, uh, with the director of public works, because probably maybe they didn't see the reason why the army was supposed to, to be part of the colonial administration. Again, we also saw that we also looked at the functions of the executive and the legislative council. And so if you want to know all this, I think you should rather look at our video, so our previous video, or watch our video on the 1903 constitution, and you will get to know all these. Good. So however, let's then look at today's topic. And today's topic, we are looking... Uh, at um, the Clifford Constitution, which was actually introduced in 1916 by uh, Governor Hugh uh, Clifford, and that's what we are looking at today. So let's quickly just look at uh, what we are supposed to know, our lesson objectives. Good, so by the end of uh, this lesson, we are supposed to be able to discuss the features of the Clifford Constitution of 1940 and 1916. So what were the features of a uh, huge Clifford's, of course, Constitution? Then we should also be able to state some of the limitations of the Clifford Constitution as well as we did for the 1903 Constitution. Good. So let's quickly look at the introduction of the Clifford Constitution, something uh, knew about the Clifford Constitution. Now we say that the Clifford Constitution of 1916 brought in changes in the membership of the executive and the legislative councils and it was the first major constitution that was introduced in the Gold Coast uh, by Governor Hugh Clifford. So as we, we saw earlier in the 1903 Constitution, the membership because of the agitations made by the educated elite uh, George, uh, I mean, Hugh Clifford decided to make some changes to the membership of the executive and the legislative council so as to probably uh, suit the aspirations 
of the educated elite. So let's look at some of the changes that took place in the constitutions and how was it different from that of 1903 constitution. First, so let's look at the features of the 1916 constitution. So let's look at the composition. We would first of all look at the composition of the features of the, of the legislative council first. So according to the Clifford the Constitution of 1916, the Legislative Council was tasked to advise the governor in the making of ordinances or laws for the colony. The governor was also the chairman and he presided over all the council's deliberation, as we have seen. So you realize that the role of the governor has not changed. The function again of the Legislative Council has also not what changed. Um, because in the 1903 constitution, the governor and the functions that the legislative council performed is almost the same as that of the 1916 constitution. So there was no change with regards to the function and the chair of the legislative council. So let's look at more of the, of, of the members, the official and the unofficial members of the legislative council. So the, the the, the Legislative Council had both official and unofficial members, and that is what we have already talked about in the 1903 Constitution, all of whom were appointed by the, by the colonial governor. So both the official and the unofficial members were all appointed by the governor. And that, again, was a problem, but we will not come to that. So let's look at the... Let's look at the some of the the members of the council actually. So the council or the legislative council actually had twenty one members, and out of these twenty one members, we had twelve of these members, uh, including the colonial governor, who of course twelve were official members. Then nine of of these, uh, I mean, uh, twenty one were unofficial members. So the 12 included the governor, so which means that they had actually had 11 members on the legislative council, as of course. Then we had nine unofficial members. So three out of the nine unofficial members represented the industry, the mining uh, industry, the banking sector, the major uh, economic sector, of course. Then three were also a paramount chiefs. So three of these nine members were also paramount chiefs. And these chiefs, they represented the three, uh, the Fante, and again, the ever speaking ethnic groups. And these were the, uh, the major ethnic groups at that time. And so it was in the right direction. Again, these chiefs were Nana of Uriata, who represented the three speaking uh, ethnic group of Achime Buakwa. Then we also had Nana Amako uh, Kwesitri, who was also uh, representing the, the Fante ethnic group, and he was from Anmabo. Then we have Togo Sri of Awomefia, who also represented the Ewe speaking you know, um, people. And then the other three were also the educated elite. Now, I have actually made this simple for you. So, as you have seen in the, the composition of the Legislative Council, were actually 21 official and unofficial members and then out of that of course 21 we had 12 official members as we have it there 12 official members then we also had what nine unofficial members as you have seen it there so out of the nine unofficial members we said that three of these nine were Europeans and the Europeans, they were representing certain sectors like mining and other important sectors like banking and co. Then the other three paramount chiefs also represented the Fanti, then the Chi, then the ever speaking ethnic group. Then the last three were the actually the educated elite who were also appointed because they had been uh, at the forefront of actually agitating or fighting for this constitutional development so you can when you look uh, critically to the composition of the legislative assembly or council 
uh, you could see that still the Europeans were in the majority uh, as opposed to the Africans who were actually supposed to be or the Gold Coasters who were supposed to be in the majority. So here we see that a majority is actually ruling uh, a minority, sorry, is actually what ruling a majority, which was not supposed to be so because the Gold Coasters were the majority. However, they were being ruled by the British who were actually a uh, minority, you understand? And then, so let's look at some of the features of the, let's continue with the features as we have looked at. So we will come to the limitations of the 1916 constitution, but let's take a look at the um, the executive council as opposed to, and if you can recall, in the 1903 constitution, the executive council only had four members and you, you know the attorney general the secretary the treasurer and the head of the army which was later replaced with the director of public works and so let's look at what changes were made in the executive council in the 1916 constitution so there was an executive council with exclusively official members without any Ghanaian official members without any Ghanaian. So you realize that again, the membership, the composition, the people in there have not changed with regards to uh, the membership. Official members were still Europeans and there were still no Ghanaians in the Executive Council. However, when you look at the, the, the composition or the changes, you could see that in the Executive Council in 1903, only four official members. However, in the 1916 Constitution, I mean, they have added two. So this included the governor who acted as a chair. The members included the, the secretary of the colony, the attorney general, the treasurer, the commander of the troops, and the director of medical services. So you realize that in the 1916 Constitution, the position of the director of public uh, uh, works and housing have been changed. Now they have brought back the head of the army or the commander of the troops. And then they have also added one uh, member who was supposed to be the director of medical services. And all these government institutions were actually held by Europeans. All of them were European. So when it comes to matters regarding the health of the Gold Coast, everything was decided by the Europeans. Uh, commander of the troops, treasurer, attorney general, everything were decided by the Europeans. So you find this uh, constitution weird because the Europeans are actually the minority. But we have a situation whereby the minority are actually uh, m m uh, being majority in the legislative and the executive council which is undemocratic and which is not the right way for a, a governance to, to, to you know it's not the right way and therefore the educated elite who had actually learned about the art of governance or government would still agitate for some of these changes to take place indeed there had been some changes with regards to the membership in both the Legislative and the Executive Council, but those changes actually uh, did not or were not reflecting the aspirations of the, of the, of the people of the Gold Coasters at that time. So think about it in your own mind. Think about some of the weaknesses that we find here. So let's look at some of the weaknesses, but before that, again, as we have said, the executive had no unofficial members. Therefore, means that all of them were official members. Good. So let's look at some of the limitations of the 1916 constitution. We have already talked about a lot of these I mean, limitations in our discussion. But let's be sure of them. So let's have them one after the other. Good. So we let's look at the first one. So the first one was that the 1916 constitution failed to provide for elective principle. And I hope you would agree with me 
elective principle in the sense that when we say elective principle, we are talking about the act of voting. So the members in both the legislative and the executive council were actually appointed, but they were not elected for which is quite undemocratic because you, these members are going to represent the citizenry and therefore the citizenry should work, should appoint them. But we find a different uh, scenario altogether whereby these members were appointed to represent the citizenry, which you know is quite strange. So it failed to provide for elective principle. So the educated elite and the some of the chiefs in the Gold Coast were actually looking out for the right to vote. Again, the the Executive Council of the 1916 Constitution also lacked African membership. All the members we have, as we have stated earlier, on were what were white which was also a problem because the executive council was the or is the highest uh, decision making body in the in the colony so if you have no Ghanaian representing on that council then indeed there is a there is a big problem you know it comes with what a problem because we should have a Ghanaian member on that uh, council again the government was empowered by the 1916 constitution to nominate both the official and ex-official members of the Legislative Council. And this implied that the members were predisposed to the influence of the, of the governor. So this also is in line with that of the, um, the elective principle. Because if the governor is the one who appoints, then it then means that he can also again depose to you, uh, of course, if he is not happy about your work, he may tend to, uh, to also, you know, no, sack you, and that is also quite undemocratic. You can be sacking and you're appointing new uh, legislative members, you know, ruling the country in that, in that sense. Good. So let's look at the educated elite again. The fourth one, the educated Africans expressed strong opposition to the 1916 constitution on the grounds that it permitted the governor to exercise excessive uh, veto power because the the as we have seen in the 1903 constitution the governor was not bound by the advice of the executive uh, executive council and so he could choose to either accept or not to accept and he could also veto everything veto here means that he could reject anything on his own grounds you understand on his own grounds that i don't agree with this and so that's it and that was also a big big problem because we can't have a one-man show because when you when you study this critically it is more or less it will make governance a one-man show which is not supposed to be so because we have a legislative assembly which is supposed to do the work the last one again the 1916 constitution was largely also condemned uh, because it was applied partially to the colony leaving out the asante and the northern territories so as i told you in the in the beginning of our our our, our discussion that asante the northern territories and the trans voter to Goland were actually not part of the of the colony so the gold coast was different so this constitution really or really did not apply to the the Asante people in the Asante and the Northern Territories and again um, to the Transvota Togola and that was also quite undemocratic it, it, it therefore seems that uh, all these group of people I have mentioned were being ruled by one governor <laughs> and so if a constitution you know it's made why shouldn't it apply to all of them why should the same governor you know give this group of people this law and then the other group of people another you know law or another set of what law and so that is that that is the whole thing that these were some of the limitations i think you if you have any questions 
or anything you can actually uh, call me on 054-20-83047 the number again 054-20-83047 so if you actually have any uh, any question to ask or anything to ask you can either ask under the comment section or you can call me personally and I would be glad to you know assist you thank you very much for your time we will meet some other time have a nice afternoon bye bye